Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and in this video, we're going to be giving you a multi tester take on how the Hocker Skyward X, there it is there, compares to the ASICS Super Blast 2. So here's a quick rundown of what you need to know about the ASIC Super Blast 2 and the Hocker Skyward X. These are two max stack super trainers designed to have the qualities of faster shoes and daily training and easy shoes all in one package. The Skyward X is the cheaper of the two by £15 in the UK and $25 in the US. Weight wise, the Super Blast 2 is the lighter of the two shoes with the two offering different drops and the Skyward X offering more stack height at both the heel and the forefoot. At the midsole, both use a combination of midsole foams with the Hocker shoe also adding a carbon plate into the mix, which you don't get on the Super Blast 2. In the upper department, ASICS uses an engineered woven one compared to the flat knit mesh on the Skyward X, which does offer a more padded fit overall. The outsoles are built for long and regular runs with ASICS using one of its AHA Plus hybrid outsoles and Hocker employing a high abrasion one. When it comes to fit of the two shoes, both of them fit me really well in my normal UK size, which is a 9, but it's worth noting that's a US 9.5 in the Hoka and then a US 10 in the ASICS. I think the Super Blast has a slightly closer fit than some of ASICS's other shoes, in particular shoes like the Gel Nimbus or the Gel Kayano. It's more in line with the fit of something like the Metaspeed in terms of the amount of length you have there. It's got a fairly dialed in toe box but you know in a perfect way for me as someone who is slightly in between sizes in general so I was happy in my normal size for both of these brands but I would say the Super Blast probably is a little bit closer fitting and I had no concerns with either shoe about the fit around the midfoot or heel. So in terms of fit I've had a good experience on both of these shoes I've got them both in a UK size 8 that is my typical running shoe size and I would say from the toe boxes they're both very accommodating on both of these shoes you know the kind of kind of room that you'd want if you're going to run a little bit longer in these shoes and it hasn't been a problem for me I would say maybe the Skyrex is a touch more kind of spacious but I really don't think there's a huge amount in it between the two shoes when you get into the midfoot, again, very similar in terms of that experience. I think then the hocker shoe feels more typically hocker in the sense that it kind of narrows a little bit more, hugs a little bit closer that I found. But again, it's a similar kind of feeling for me on the Super Blast 2. I think mainly the Skyrex just has a little bit more material there and that kind of extends to what you're getting in the tongue. It's a little bit more padded than the Super Blast 2 one. Um, and you're just getting something that just fits a little bit more snug around your feet. You get back to the heel collar and then you're getting a little bit more of a protection on the Skyward X. There's a bit more kind of guard and defense to keep things controlled at the back, whereas you're getting a little bit less. But the level of padding around the heel collar is very similar. So yeah, for me, going true to size has been absolutely fine. I would say similar space up front of the toes, similar hold at the midfoot, a bit more padding in general or a bit more of a padded field in the Skyward X. So if that's something you prefer, then that's what it's going to give you over the Super Blast 2, which has been very comfortable and accommodating for me as well. So in terms of my running time in these two shoes, I've done a fair bit more running in the Skyward X than I have done in the Super Blast 2. I've done over 50 miles in this shoe now. I have done just over 30 miles in the Super Blast 2. But what I would say overall in my time is that both of these shoes have been really great to run in, really enjoyable. And I think in terms of fitting that profile of being max stack super trainer shoes, so for me, shoes that you can run easy in, but it's going to give you that kind of level of cushioning and protection over longer miles and give you that scope to run quick. And I think transition between those two kind of slower and kind of quicker paces. These are the two best examples that I have used personally. But I do think there are some differences that are going to maybe influence which one is going to be a better fit for you. I think the first thing for me is the weight. Now, this is significantly lighter than the Skyward X. And it is, this is closer in something like a kind of standard daily trainer, something like the Nova Blast in terms of that way to give you a sense of how much lighter it is. This is around 300 grams for me in my UK size 8. But what I would say that unlike shoes or MaxTac Super Trainer shoes that weigh in around the same as this, this handles that weight a lot better than those other shoes that I've kind of tested. And I felt like I felt heavy and cumbersome to kind of run in. I don't feel like that's been the same case for me. I'm quite skinny in terms of my build, but I haven't found this a heavy shoe to to run in or too much of shoe to kind of run with or run a little bit more up tempo in now in terms of the makeup of these two um super trainers or max stack super trainers both have kind of dual density midsoles this has got kind of p-burn kind of eva frame this has got um kind of midsoles from or foams from the meta speed range but also the nova blast as well too 
And that really kind of dictates the kind of feel you get here and how well they work. Now, what I would say about the Skyward X, now this has a carbon plate, this doesn't. I don't think that makes a massive difference in terms of what they're like to run faster in. But what I would say is this is definitely the more plush feeling of the midsoles that you sink in a little bit more in it. But there is some snap. There is a bit of a nice rocker in there as well, too. I think what is the difference with this shoe when you want to run a little bit more tempo in it is you really have to kind of do the work to get that the magic out of this shoe at slightly more tempo paces. Now, I have found I've been able to go easy, moderate and even up tempo in the shoe. and It's felt fine for me. And as I said earlier, that transition between going from kind of slow to fast and fast to slow, I think it does a very good job of that. It's very smooth. It's very stable. And I've never felt it was kind of out of control to run in this shoe. And I think that's, you know, a real thing that's kind of stood out for me on the Skyward X. Now, with the um, Super Blast 2, it feels a little bit more effortless to run a little bit quicker in the shoe. And I would say for faster runs, this would be the shoe that I would be going for. I think ultimately what you're getting in the midsole here compared to the Skyward X is something that is a little bit more bouncy, a little bit more aggressive in terms of that kind of rocker. Now it's not as aggressive as a Metaspeed, but there's definitely some elements of the Metaspeed shoe in the Super Blast 2 to make it feel like a shoe that can kind of roll through really nice. And when you've got it at that kind of weight, I have found when I've run quicker in this shoe, in the Super Blast 2, it's felt a lot nicer to do. I found when I've got up tempo in the shoe, that's where it's kind of maxed out for me. But I think if I wanted to go faster than that, then this is the shoe that can work and do that. From an outsole point of view, you're getting kind of the focus of that kind of outsole in the same areas. You know, the slightly different designs in terms of those outsoles. As I said, I've done kind of over 50 miles in the Skyward X. I'm not seeing any terrible signs of wear. There is some exposed areas of the foam, but ultimately I think there's enough protection in the right areas and the grip and traction for me has been very good. Same story with the um, Super Blast 2 um, outsole. It's been very good for me. Oh, it's been very solid. So yeah, two very good experiences. I think two Max Stack Super shoes that really kind of stand out for me for the right reasons. I do think there's one that probably is going to be a better fit for some people and it's a better fit for other people, but definitely two that I've really enjoyed running in. So done a lot of running in both of these shoes and they're two shoes I have liked a lot. Like with the Super Blast 2, that wasn't a surprise. Like I really like the Super Blast 1. I think the Super Blast 2 is mostly more of the same. You maybe get a little bit more pop from the midsole foam, but in general, it feels like a very similar shoe, which is to say an incredibly versatile shoe that's comfortable, fast, like unbelievably lightweight for the amount of cushioning and bounce you have here. Like a shoe that really is good for a bit of everything. I was a bit more surprised by the Skyward X, which was not a shoe I really expected to like because it was just so big, pretty heavy. It felt like you know, a very expensive shoe that would just be useful for cruising around in. And that is kind of what it is, but it is so much fun to cruise around in that it did win me over quite a lot. Like it's really bouncy. It's surprisingly stable. It's very comfortable. It is a shoe that you can tick over in at a pretty good pace as well, despite the fact it is quite a big and heavy shoe. You've got a reasonable rocker there, a nice bouncy foam. It, it runs lighter than it is for sure. And I did enjoy doing long runs in this and recovery runs during marathon training. It was a great shoe for eating up loads and loads of miles. It's certainly a little bit better at that kind of easy run, I would say, than the Super Blast, which is a really nice shoe for doing long runs in, but I think it is a bit more geared up for faster stuff. So it's a shoe that makes picking up the pace a lot easier than you can do in the Hoka. Like I was doing something like an easy to steady run, which is a pretty staple part of my training, like in the Super Blast, moving through the gears feels pretty effortless. It, it makes running slightly faster speeds feel like it's taking less effort, less out of you. And it is like I have a lower heart rate, that kind of thing when running in the shoe when I start to push the pace up a little bit, not, not to all out express race paces or anything like that, but just moving through the gears, it's very easy to do in the Super Blast. You're a lot more aware of the Skyward X and the size of it when you start to run at speed. Like you can do it a little bit, but it's not a shoe that I think is really built for that. It disappears in the foot fairly nicely, actually, when you're doing long runs or slower runs without really thinking about the pace. You can tick over in it quite well. You get that nice bouncy sensation, that really protective feeling. But if you do try and up the pace, it's not really what it's for, I'd say. So Super Blast, I think, is the more versatile shoe in terms of my run test. But when it comes to just eating up loads and loads of miles, if you're doing lots of easy running, the Skull X has a slightly more comfortable and relaxed feel about it. One thing I noticed when I was running in both shoes at the same time is that the uh, actually Super Blast feels almost a bit more stiff and propulsive, even though it hasn't got a plate. And there is, you know, a plate of some sort in the Skull Dex. No, it's got gaps in it and that kind of thing. But actually, it feels a more flexible, relaxed shoe than the Super Blast, which is a little bit stiff. And I quite like that at easy paces, but I do think it's one reason some people wouldn't like the Super Blast so much just for relaxed runs. And that it is quite a stiff shoe that feels like it wants to move a bit quicker, whereas you can really ease into runs with the Skull Dex and just enjoy them at very slow paces. It comes to the verdict of picking between these shoes, it might depend a little bit on what you're looking for, but the price is certainly a factor of both these shoes. These are incredibly expensive shoes, and I think you've really got to want them for a specific purpose to 
even consider making the outlay required here. Like Super Blast, I think, lives up to its price tag a bit more because it is so versatile. If you pick it up, you can really, I think, dispense with two shoes at least in your rotation and just buy the Super Blast and it'll cover off those jobs really well. Like I love it as a daily trainer. I love it for slightly fast runs. I like it for long, easy runs as well. Even if you don't love it so much just for those really easy runs, you're still going to get a lot of use out of the Super Blast. It does its job really well. Now, Skull X, I think, is much more focused on those easy runs. And if you are doing loads and loads of miles in particular and you want a protective shoe to eat up those miles and feel good and enjoy those miles, it brings more fun to those miles for sure. Skull X is really good at that. And it's probably better than the Super Blast for doing that. I just feel if I picked up the Skull X, I would probably then have two more shoes in my rotation as well. So I'd you know, buy a speedy trainer as well for faster runs, interval sessions, that kind of thing, and then a racing shoe. Whereas with the Super Blast, you could just pick this up and a racing shoe. And I'd be very happy with a really good two shoe rotation there. So the price then feels a little bit more realistic perhaps but if money is no concern at all then i would look at the hocus gold x for easy runs as one of the best easy run shoes on the market personally i'm very happy to do that kind of run in a much cheaper shoe and i don't really feel the need to go and buy this but it is certainly very fun and it is something a bit different so you're paying a lot of money here but you are getting something for that money in terms of a shoe that is fun to run in feels a bit different to other shoes it's very bouncy still very stable it's just a really good shoe to run in so sometimes if you're going to spend 200 pounds you can end up with shoes that i think aren't really much different to shoes that you could buy for 100 pounds but with both of these you are getting something a little bit special in certain ways but for me i value the versatility of the Super Blast 2 as its special feature a lot more than I value the kind of fun comfort for easy runs of the Skyward X. So I would get the Super Blast out of these two. I think it just does a lot more. But yeah, like I say, the Skyward X has got the edge. You could just think for a very fun and bouncy shoe for running a lot of easy miles in. So my take on whether you should go for the Hocker Skyward X or the ASIC Super Blast 2. Now the way I look at it is these are two of the best Max Stack Super Trainer shoes that kind of deliver that experience slightly different ways. Now if I was looking for a shoe like this that could I could run easy in, I could run moderate paces in, I could run long in, and I could potentially even maybe race in as well too. Which one would I pick? I would be spending a little bit more money on the Super Blast too. I just think it has that more natural kind of faster feel to it, despite not having a plate in it compared to something like Skyward X that does. But I do think that kind of faster paces it does do a better job on that front. And I think even when you ease off, it doesn't feel awkward to do that either. Now on the Skyward X, I think. It's a shoe that you go for if you prefer something that feels a little bit more comfortable at easier paces, feels a little bit more plush in terms of that overall feeling, but can handle some slightly quicker paces. Again, as I said, it is the heavier of the two shoes, but I do think it handles that weight very well. And I think if you wanted something that kind of really had a slant between, you know, kind of running easy to moderate and slightly more up tempo, then I do think this is a shoe that can do it. And I think it's going to be a good fit for a lot of people. But ultimately, if it was me, if I had to pick between the two shoes and I wanted that kind of all rounder, style of shoe in that kind of max stack super trainer category i would be going for the super blast too but i've had a very good time running the skyward x and i think this is going to be a good fit for a lot of people as well too okay so there you have it that is our take on how the hocker skyward x compares to the asic super blast 2 now if you've got any questions about this video or these two shoes do let us know in the comments if you want to see other comparison videos with either of these shoes do let us know about that as well too as always like and subscribe hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos and yeah We'll see you for the next Run Tester's video.